<laughs> mean to be. Did you want to eat this while doing or no? Uh, I kind of do, yeah. Okay. Do you like the sock? I don't like the sock. You do? I like. Do you like the sock? It's very penis-like. <laughs> it's very phallic -y. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say, I mean, I guess it's technically it looks more like a chode than it did before now. Yeah. yeah. That's all I have to say. Yeah, you're right. Um... <laughs> and before, I don't mean it as like before, a negative thing. Before doing research um, for this specific podcast, what did you know about Hinduism? Did you know anything about Hinduism? Have we started? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, not much. Um, in when I was going to MPC, I took um, a Asian art history class. Cool. And it was that's really cool. Yeah, it was super fun and, and like all of Asia. So in, it, yeah, it was all of Asia. So did they do like, Russian stuff? Touched on it a yeah, bit, but yeah. not much. Technically speaking, most of Russia's in Asia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was really fun, and it became Which like was really interesting to think about. <laughs> um, art wise, um, Hindu that's like. Perfect. The Hindu culture has a lot of art, but, like, we mainly focused on Buddhism, because, like, right. the Buddha um, religion has more art than that. Interesting. Um, but in... Which was a spinoff of Hinduism. Yeah. Interesting way. Um, but the Hindu culture, like, has so many, like... <laughs> as far as art goes? They have, like, temples dedicated, and the temples are, like, decked out, like, inside decked and out. out. Also. Um, the it's intricately designed as intricate. Part of, like, carvings and carvings uh, on the outside, like, like in-depth carvings on the outside, like massive ones, like as big as like, um, the side of a building, wow. like there's statues kind of. Did they do um, a lot of like, um, tiling? Is that a big thing in, in India slash, uh, Asia that you remember? There wasn't a lot of tile. I think it was a lot of carving was a, and pottery. Um... This was, like, six years ago. Right. So I can't exactly remember. Um, but, like, the one um, Hindu, like, temple that I really remember, um, it was for one of the gods, and it was, like, the god of fertility, I think. But on the outside of the building, they had massive carved-out statues, like, as big as... They were huge. They were, like, um, two stories tall, probably, of just people having sex on the side of the building <laughs> and there were like at least a half dozen couples like statues around the building just screwing in different ways wild i don't think you'd be able to see that and then on the inside soon. they had like actual paintings about the gods too but i can't remember six years ago from what i understand from like um when uh my first memory is jordan peterson talking about the temples, how they often have stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, like the inference is like, those are, that's kind of surface level stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you're readily, um, once you, you go past the, the sexual and like the more physical st elements of the outside of, of the religion, and then you kind of go into the religion, which would be like inside the temple, which kind of expands upon other ideas. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people need a certain level of maturity before they actually should go inside a temple and actually study it for themselves. Totally makes sense, and lot, I totally A lot of that. people don't make it past that step, but it's good to eventually do that. Oh, that's such a bummer. What? When you take the corner off the soy sauce packet, but, like, you didn't penetrate the oh, actual damn. packet, so nothing <laughs> comes out. It's nice. This <laughs> you is why just we have throw it away packets. and get a new packet. You don't even try. Oh, there's no way to fix this. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> You only technically... Yeah, I'll try to bite it. You get soy sauce everywhere? I think I did it. Did it. <laughs> I just it. opened this one now. Now I have two. I only need one. Is this one, one open? Yeah. I said it was open. You pour it everywhere. Hey, dog. Um, so what did you know about Hinduism? Because before... Um, before, I would say... This. Yeah, before that, a couple papers... Um, a uh, year last year mm -hmm. um probably i knew i knew the multi god and i vaguely had an understanding not karma karma but like about that <laughs> karma, everybody knows what karma is because it's so simple yeah um i didn't know about that um and i vaguely knew that they had like some sort of um unifying god i didn't know what it was called and i didn't know anything about it but i, I knew that, <gasps> that religion it's freaking weirdo there's nothing there, right? There's nothing there. Yeah. She just barks. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I basically knew what now I know is Brahmin, but at the time I was just like, oh yeah, there's like a, a Holy Spirit-esque kind of thing going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but now I know a bit more. Yeah. So as far as... You want to go see? Yeah, I'm going to see. I'll just eat my sushi and drink my juice in peace. Ah, yes. Strawberry orange. Delicious. There's nothing. Are you whispering to yourself? Well, I mean, it's a live mic. Oh. <laughs> which means that it's still recording, and I don't want to do much happening, so. <laughs> the two options are stay, sit in silence or fill the, <laughs> fill the gap. <laughs> well. So, I suppose a podcast when you break down religion mm-hmm. is um, the basis should be try to, um, through our research, find out what is um, the the main core parts of the religion as a whole. And then we can maybe, um, if, we, if we get to it, we can talk about some specific things that we liked about the religion. Okay. But first we should probably structure what we're talking about and like what is Hinduism as, as a whole. Mm-hmm. And I did take some notes, which I think actually, specifically one video which I showed you, which you probably have already seen. I think I watched that like twice a month ago. Yeah, a uh, video by Cogito. So most of these notes are based on that one video. But um, of all the videos I watched, and I watched quite a few, uh, even some long form ones, I feel like that was the most condensed, like, po- like purposefully condensed and like it all the main elements were kind of brought together yeah. in, like, a less than 20-minute video. No, I'd agree, because, like, I research around... I can't remember the other ones, but I found, like, a few actual lectures posted. Yeah. And it was either um, the video... What was the guy's name again? Kajito. Kajito. Like, his video was very straight to the point. It was only, like, 45 minutes. Was his... I thought it was, like, 20, 25. Maybe 25. Yeah, it was, like, short Kujito. and sweet. Kajito. Yeah. Short and sweet. Cogito. Cogito or Cogito? C-O-G-I-T-O. Yeah, his was like short and sweet and Mm -hmm. jam-packed with info and everything else kind of droned on. And I know Hinduism is a huge religion and has like multiple aspects, but it was very difficult to like get a very quick answer on like what Hinduism is. Yeah, and I think that that's pro like a good thing for the most part because Mm -hmm. it's a deep Oh, you should know. So like there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah. But it does... Cause but like this the sh- one was just really nicely condensed. Yeah. Um, and those had had their own kind of... It's harder to, it's harder to like, remember a whole video series on Hinduism than it is to remember one dense video. Yeah. Which is nice, actually. Um, I think that the, the, the one through line that I heard from multiple people... Or there's a bunch of through lines, but one of the main ones was that the word Hindu and the word India come from the same, um, like, core root. And I think uh, it, the only reason it's called India is because in the Hindi Valley, it's like, I think that's what it was called, um, people did trade with the Hindi Valley. And eventually the word for that area just kind of became India, mm-hmm. um, a, a, even though it was based on the word Hindu, mm-hmm. which is what the people um, worshipped in that area. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's really interesting that um, the core of India is this religion. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was also really interesting where, um, cause the lecture series I was listening to, um, what was it called? Um, Great World Religions Hinduism, um, narrated by Professor Mark Moses. Yeah, I listened to that. Yeah. Um, that was really interesting. And he really talked about how, like, the native Indians didn't even call like, they didn't name India themselves. Like, another group named it that. Yeah, and, people, yeah. Yeah, which is, like, really interesting when you look at it. Kind of everywhere, like, you don't... They didn't... They didn't call themselves Indians. Like, another outside group would refer them to as Indians and from India and, like, practicing Hinduism and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and it eventually caught on because other people were calling them Hindus. Mm. They eventually called themselves Hindus. Kind of same with Christianity, mm-hmm. like other religions, um, like Judaism and stuff like that, didn't call or started calling Christians Christians, mm-hmm. and then eventually Christians caught on and called themselves that. I wonder if they called themselves beforehand. They well, they were Jesus-ians. such a small group. <laughs> Jesusians. <laughs> yeah, Jesuits actually works. Jesuits are a thing still. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's interesting that... Um, I think it's interesting. This... The name came from what they were called by other people rather than what they called themselves. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I do know that it's, uh, as far as Hinduism goes, uh, it's very diverse. Mm -hmm. It's very, very diverse as far as like what do you specifically believe. Um, and they have seven core beliefs that kind of, even though it's diverse, these are the seven tenets of the religion, mm -hmm. which uh, I wrote down as belief in one universal soul, belief in an immortal uh, individual soul, um, uh, belief in karma, belief in moksha, belief in the Vedas, uh, belief in cyclical time, like um, there's like four stages and then the world ends. And the world begins again in the yeah. four stages. Um, and then belief in dharma, which is essentially purpose. Yeah. Which is like each individual has a dharma. Has I like need a some dharma. Sometimes, well, you have dharma, you just don't know what it is. You just have to discover I need to what access that is. the dharma. Right. Um, if we broke those down, uh, belief in one universal soul is essentially Brahman, which is the which is essentially what all we what all of us are. And, the, and this video described it super well, I would say, by comp uh, comparison to other uh, explanations, even though those other explanations are pretty good, too. This one described it as uh, a drop in the ocean. Like, how a, a drop that's um, falling into the ocean is separate, but uh, technically speaking is just part of the ocean. Like, if you throw a rock into water and it splashes upward, yeah. it would describe us as the splash upward. Yeah. Which I, like, actually... Um, or eventually we'll all come back down into the ocean. Because yeah. I found that also... That's not the only um, explanation I've found that uses that hmm. metaphor. It's a metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, like, so kind of inspiring and just, like, really interesting yeah. hearing that. Like, and kind of gives meaning to everything. Hmm. Like, your life right now, mm -hmm. um, it also, like, basically encapsules karma. Like, your life right now is outside of the water, and it's that droplet hovering above, the and will eventually yeah. come back down and join the mass ocean of, like, purity. Yeah. Yeah, so mm. it might be hell up there in that droplet, but yeah. you're eventually going to come back down and, and join down and be serenity. Wrong. Yeah. Or you'll keep this... Or I guess technically you'll just keep being reborn until you figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Something like but, that. Yeah, but ultimately the goal is to be back to be become one with the Brahman, the universal soul. Yeah. Um, the second one, uh, belief in the immortal individual soul, which would be like the droplets we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and transmigration, which is the rebirth, the cycle of death and rebirth, and which is ultimately determined by karma, which is the, the actions, good or bad, that you take. Usually good or bad that you yeah. take. I suppose it could be neutral, technically, but um, whether or not you have a better life next time is really determined on how you live your life today. Mm -hmm. So you live your life well, and that when you're reborn, um, it'll be better. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, belief in moksha, which is realizing oneness with Brahman, which is the, the process of just realizing that everything is one, comes from one thing. Mm -hmm. Which, the, I, as, I'm not a super spiritual person at this point in my life, but um, one of the, the ways that I think about that, because I'm not Hindu, it would be uh, like kind of like the concept of what evolution actually means as far as all the creatures that live on Earth. Mm -hmm. Every liter Literally every life form on Earth comes from uh, like a specific individual um, cell. Yeah. And, that <laughs> and that's so interesting. That just that... got a little too crazy one day. No, it wasn't a bacteria. Was it a bacteria? Yeah. Yeah, sick. Cool. Yeah, one bacteria that uh, gave rise to every life form on Earth mm -hmm. that we can conceive of today. You know, evolution has the holes as far as um, being able to actually fundamentally prove something is difficult, yeah. but at the same time is like the best explanation we have. Um, but I think that that's really interesting that uh, the, the Hindu religion kind of revolves around oneness, and mm -hmm. uh, technically speaking, all life on Earth came from one uh, individual life form. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then the next one is belief in the Vedas, which are the four sacred texts. Um, the corners four? Of, there's four of them. There's four, four Vedas. Yeah, four Vedas. They're so long. Yeah. It's like the world's longest poet because it's like yeah. in a poetry form. Mm. And it's like as long as War and Peace. Is that the big longest book it's, in the world? Uh, if not longer. 
which one? One of them is. Um, I think it's together as a collective. It's like the way longest... longer than the Bible by by far. Oh yeah, That's but together as a collective, I think it's the world's um, longest poetry book. Hmm. I mean, that's, like, degrading. Not degrading, but it's, like, acknowledging it as poetry. Mm. Mm. Uh, they believe, most uh, Hindus believe that there's some sort of divine, they were divinely revealed. So not necessarily just thought out by humans, but believe that, like, um, the true, the Hindu people who believe in, in these sort of gods would say that the gods gave us these stories, or these poems, or these songs, or whatever the forefate is happen to hold yeah uh and then the belief in cyclical time which is the, which i already kind of described which is the yugas which um start with the krita period then go into the treta period then the devapara period and then um finally the kali period um the whole cycle is about 4.32 million years yeah. um and uh after the kali and and uh, essentially one of the gods destroys the world the universe uh it starts over back at the krita um, and Isn't most... it Shiva that destroys the universe? Yes, yes but we haven't gotten to the gods yet, so oh. that's why I haven't mentioned it. <laughs> um, and most, if not all, uh, Hindus do believe that we are cons constantly, or not constantly, but we are currently in the fourth and final yuga. We're in the Kali period. Yeah. So, essentially, the world's about to end. <laughs> A lot of religions kind of think that, huh? Just about every one. Yeah. <laughs> and if you think about it makes sense yeah. <laughs> uh there's there's i think that there's constantly enough going wrong in the world that you can kind of you can you could always say that it feels like it's about to end i know but this this religion's been around for like how many thousands of years two four thousand years this one specifically yeah uh it's the oldest religion in existence i think it's four thousand I think oh. it's a lot longer. I don't know the the, the exact okay. number, but I think it's like <laughs> I think it's got to be like twenty thousand or something like that. I don't know. I mean, uh, the oldest. I mean, obviously, the oldest. Uh, about twelve thousand years ago is the oldest physical um, structure that we found, as far as like a, a city structure. Mm -hmm. So, it maybe fifteen thousand years or something along those lines. We have Google for a yeah, reason. I'd Google it, man. I don't know, but I I can, couldn't possibly before. Because I know um, Judaism is like four thousand years. Four thousand. Well, how old is Judaism? Judaism's like two thousand five hundred. It's like right before, because there's BC mm -hmm. before Christ and AD. So um, could be two thousand. Hmm, Judaism is also nearly 4,000. Yeah, okay, so I don't know what that means, because the, the videos that I looked up uh, were saying that Hinduism was, like, twice as old as Judaism. And it could have been biased from the person who was uh, doing the lesson, but I think that he was correct. Oh, it said more than 2,000, 4,000. This is just the first, like, wiki docs that pops up. Yeah. It's saying this one's 12,000. Hinduism text gives a length of 12,000 defined years. I don't know what that means. So you're, it's, is that suggesting more along the lines of 12,000? Um, I don't know. Sorry. No, don't it's be. very, like, up in the air. There was one that said 12,000, and the rest say more than four to 5,000. And the last uh, fundamental thing that we could break down is... No, don't, don't, what are you sorry for? Gosh, we got distracted about age <laughs> no, and religions. <laughs> uh, belief in Dharma would be just essentially breaking, broken down as your purpose. And generally is uh, defined by your age and caste. Obviously, as you get older, your, your purpose is going to shift. Because mm -hmm. if you are a bricklayer, you don't need to be a bricklayer when you're 90 years old. To, you can't to, be a bricklayer you when, you're, a bricklayer 90 when, years when old. you're 90 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, even if you live for 80 years doing that. <laughs> Since you were zero. Um, right out. The One of the things about Hinduism is they don't really have any prophets. Hmm, that's nice. Uh, they have a lot of texts, though. Yeah. They have a whole lot of texts. They have well, four they... main Vedas. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Well, on top of the text, like, there's over... This religion has over three million documented gods. 
Mm. So a whole said, bunch of texts yeah. about each of those three million gods. When I looked it up, it said three, 33 million. 33. Like, I don't know how you get to 33 million. But... Well, it's like all the stories and texts they have, mm -hmm. um, every character in it is a god. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But only eight of them no are prophets. the ones that are, are always in existence. Eight are always in existence, but like all of their things. friends that are happening in those stories are also gods. Interesting. Uh, there's the four collections, or the four uh, texts, which are the Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, the Sama Veda, and the Atharva Veda. And the Rig Veda has to do with truth, reality, and the universe, um, and is a collection of songs. The Yajur Veda is sacrificial, like, rites and rituals, okay. and so that sort. The Sama Veda is um, directly translated as the sweet song that destroys so uh, sorrow, and is the only Veda that's entirely set to music. Hmm. And is mostly songs of praise to the gods. And then the last one is the Atharva Veda, which is a collection of knowledge, curses, herbal, things about things having to do with cursing, things having to do with herbal remedies, things having to do with war, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And are followed up by the Upanishads, which um, kind of tries to expand on that Veda, which kind of which says that people are not their minds, but their Atman, their they are their soul, not just what they think. Hmm. So. Uh, and you, as an individual, are not what you see. You are your soul. Mm -hmm. So if you think of your sense of self, they would consider their soul their self. Yeah. And they, I think that's a kind of a through line for most people. Most mm -hmm. people would say that just what I'm saying is not who I am. Yeah. Or even, like, your physical being. I remember um, hearing some description on this where it's like, look at your hand. Is that you? No, it's your <laughs> hand. Like, well, you can say that about everything. Yeah, you can say that about everything. Mind. Yeah, in your mind as well. It's like my brain. It's my brain, but my brain is not me. Right. Which is a very think, interesting statement to wrap your head around. Right. The most literal statement, the way I could describe it, would be like, uh, you like uh, hardware and software, where essentially uh, the soul would be some sort of software that exists on the hardware makes sense yeah so the soul would be the program running on the computer mm -hmm. yeah Nothing i dig designs. it yeah Very... that's that's kind of what i <laughs> like into the most physical bare bones interpretation of what a soul would be yeah. so far we're good though yeah everything is like basically what you've done in your research as well mm -hmm. um and then the some more texts would be the piranhas the bhagavad-gita the ramayana and the mahabharata mahabharata Sorry, I am not a, a person who knows how to no, speak No, I would languages. have stuttered through that whole, <laughs> through all of your notes. I can't read. There are 18 well-known paradas. Um, the Bhagavad Gita is about uh, mainly diff how um, there are, you're going to be uh, presented with many, many difficult choices. And the ultimate goal is to follow your dharma, follow your purpose to its, its end as best you can. Um, and the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, Mahabharata is our action epics, essentially. They're like hero's journey kind of things. Um, I remember a description, one of the stories is like the main character is this like super cool um, soldier character where like maybe like a Link kind of from Zelda games kind of character. And he's got a, a companion who's a monkey, who's like not just a monkey, but like a super soldier monkey who's like a, a badass monkey yeah, man. Yeah, I remember hearing that. Yeah. These are all gods, by the way, and not characters. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not a Hindu, so no. I would say that these are characters. Oh, <laughs> so I would say I would use face. those words in interchangeably, mm -hmm. which I feel like is fair enough, unless, yeah. yeah. If I was talking to a Hindu, I might actually listen to what you just said, but because you're not Hindu, I'll, just, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that it's okay. Uh, four Hindu goals, which are Dharma, Artha, Kuma, and Moksha. Uh, moksha, which is the oneness with um, the universe, or... Uh, which is when breaking through the Brahma? cycle of rebirth and, and just becoming one with the with the, the ultimate um, god, the Brahman, uh, can only be um, achieved if you get all of the other three in line. Your Dharma, which is your purpose, your Artha, which is essentially your pers pursuit of prosperity and good reputation, and your Kama, which is um, generally t talked about in the Kama Sutra, which yeah. is a lot of ways to have pleasurable sex, which is pleasure in body and mind. Interesting. So once you get those three things, your purpose, your pursuit of prosperity and good reputation, and pleasure of body and mind um, in order, then you can actually become um, part of one with the universe again. Mm. So it's about balancing those three things to achieve the ultimate goal. And one of the things you need to keep look out for in that process is the six temptations. 
which would be comma, which is materialism, uh, which is different than the comma we just, just mentioned. Apparently the word for them is the same. So I would assume that comma is because everything's pleasurable. So comma is the pleasurable, yeah, but so it's, it's also pleasure. the temptation of physical things. But the temptation things. of being obsessed with pleasure. Okay. So like you got to be careful with that. Um, uh, crota, which is anger. Loba, which is greed. Moha, which is unrealistic attachment to things, people, power. So like obsession with uh, 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 K-pop obsession would probably be considered some sort of moha. <laughs> Or like back in the day, Bieber obsession, things like that. Yeah. Uh, so it's like idolizing. What was or... the guy who did I'm Blue? Ba do be da do ba. That was not popular what was, at all. What was the band? I don't know. He wasn't. A, What's the guy? It was a one hit wonder. What was the guy? No, no. He's a famous actor now. No, he's not. He did in time. Google. Justin Timberlake. Timberlake. He didn't do I'm Blue. Out of he didn't do I'm no. Blue. Out of no, he didn't do that. Oh, I didn't know. I thought he was in that band. No. Justin Timberlake is a wonderful person. Yeah, Justin Timberlake. All, but again, like, yeah, obsession with that. people get a, obsessed about him. People who obsess over a, a specific person, like, worship mm-hmm. them like a god, I would say that would be so, part, like, of, part of part this, of that. Oh, how it was... Uh, unrealistic, so it means, like, you no, can show was, respect without it being unrealistic. Yeah. So it's kind of like the... Not greed. Not envy. But just, like, materialism. It's a different type like, of materialism, but yeah. sentimental. Um, but, like, you can also get power greed I guess materialism directly comes from the pleasure it brings you directly mm. and then i guess moha would be like the attachment to something for a different reason yeah makes sense hmm. Ma, uh, mata which is pride and matsarya which is jealousy and the way to avoid those is to follow your dhamma and avoid these temptations and your soul will merge back into brahman if you're able to do that yeah, yeah. and then i'll it, and then I start talking about a bunch of gods, sort of like, things like that. And then also the caste system. And that's m- most of my notes. Is there anything you want to add in the meantime? Um, no. I'm good. Cool. <laughs> um, the caste system, it's... Let's go over that real system? quick. Sure. Um, do you want to talk about it? I'm sure. I can talk about it. Um, for what I remember, the caste system... Oh. Did a god describe the caste system uh it was in the Bhagavad Gita and another and one of the Vedas mm-hmm. um the, the Bhagavad Gita and the Rig Veda mm-hmm. and it described it as um it basically said uh I created the whoever created I think it was the creator god Brahman Brahma created the caste system when he created people, he created um, four classes of people, mm-hmm. and he created them as the Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, the Vyasha, Vya, Vya, Vaishyas, and the Shudras. Mm-hmm. Priests, warriors, traders, laborers. Yeah. And it was and, just um, as a system to like yeah. support each other. Yeah, and as a, as a pyram- sure. like a top down pyramid kind of situation where there's yeah. more of the bottom ones than the top ones. Yeah, to support each other because like you have to have more of the laborers to support the traders and more traders to or um, support the warriors, um, and then the priests. Like you're not gonna have that many priests out there, yeah. um, or the highest class. And like originally it was meant just as like a guide, but later on, um, I don't exactly remember. Turn like, the page. Turn the page. <laughs> Um, the Mansutri changed the rules. Yeah, however you pronounce that. Manus Nuri. You don't have to. No. Yeah, good enough. Um, it's uh, Menace Murdy. Menace Murdy ended up changing the rules and making it so that, like, your class. You can only go down in rank. You couldn't go up, move upward. So, like, if you were a trader and wanted to, like, you're a male trader and fell in love with a um, poor laborer. laborer and you married them, you would go down in rank into labor. Yeah. Which was really interesting and not the you intent of the caste, the caste system. Yeah, not the intent of the caste system. But, like, Years and years later, um, the caste system is still there, but not followed. Not really, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, it's still it's, acknowledged, It's acknowledged, but, but it's not followed as, yeah. as directly as that translation. Yeah. Which ultimately seems like, when you translate the works, seems like people are happier with the newer way of looking at it, rather than the old way, which was 
very hardcore. It was, like, the way um, <laughs> they put it into place, it was really to just protect the, like, highest rank. Mm. Whoever got in power just gave all the power to the Brahmins. Mm-hmm. Or, um, yeah, the Brahmins. Which, if you, like, think about it, is like, well, that's really corrupt. Obviously, that happened as we know what history, how history goes. Yeah. Someone took a system... Um, and made it themselves more powerful. Put it in their favor. Put it in their favor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is what you'd expect. Which is common. (laughs) To this day, we struggle with that sort of thing, where you have a system that's probably not that bad on its own, and then a bunch of people abusing it. Oh, of course. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that was the basics. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you want to talk about anything that really stuck out to you? About Hinduism? Yeah, Hinduism. Do you I have... think the most interesting thing to me is always the age is in comparison to other religions. Yeah. I just think that it's really interesting, though, because being as my Christian background, I, for a very long time, thought about things in terms of um, how, old, how old this specific religion was. So mm-hmm. I would consider it a lot of what the Jewish religion, how old the Jewish religion was. But this specific religion is actually far older than even that. Oh, yeah. Far older by, like, to almost, about twice as much. Yeah. I think um, uh, when it, I think I told you about this once when I watched a video uh, where a, a guy was breaking down the religion and he said if you condensed um, all of the religions into um, um, age groups into I like think, human age yeah. ages it would um, be like Christianity would be like a, like a year old maybe not even that much maybe like around a year old no I think it was Christianity would be like roughly a elementary schooler and then Judaism would be like a um, early like middle aged person, middle, like thirty mid thirties to mid early forties. Yeah. And then Hinduism would be an eighty five year old yeah. or something like that. Something like that, yeah. So yeah, it makes sense that Hinduism is like nine to twelve thousand years old. Yeah. Cause um Judaism? Judaism is about six thousand. Six thousand and Christianity is about like two about two 2000. five yeah. Two hundred and fifty. Two thousand. Yeah. I was trying to make that. 2,100 yeah. by about 2,000. Yeah. Roughly 2,000. Roughly 2,000. Yeah. Old. We're in 2021 AD, so yeah. <laughs> our year system is based off Christianity. Right. Wild. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that's just really interesting that this is literally talking about the oldest religion that's in existence and how you... And that concept, also thinking about how uh, Judaism is all about the one God, that kind of is all powerful, all knowing, all, all like, um, and we're one. We want to be one with that God, mm-hmm. essentially. And this religion is essentially saying that yeah, we have that concept too, mm-hmm. except we call it Brahman. Yeah. And you guys call it God. Yeah. Which is basically the only difference for. Which is like, I mean, if you look at um, Brahman, isn't necessarily. How would you describe Brahman in connection to everything? Yeah, like we described it earlier with the ocean and the drops of the drop yeah, of water. Yeah, yeah, But I was just thinking, because, like, the story of how Brahman created um, the universe is kind of wild. Well, that's Brahma. Those Brahma. are the gods Sorry. within Brahman. Sorry, there's Brahman, so many gods. Yeah, and Brahma and Brahman kind of, like, the same, like, same word. So, mm-hmm. um, the, the Hindus have a... a Emphasis on the gods that are created from Brahman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's three. But do you remember, like, the creation of Brahman? Brahman? Brahman doesn't have creation story. I don't remember. I didn't actually look up creation story, so. Okay, look it up now. It was wild. What was so, the creation story? So, um, the creation story, there's another god. Of Brahman. Yes. The universal god? The universal god. How was Brahman created? Um. Oh, god. I might be getting this confused, but there's, like, Brahman, who's the universal god, um, and then there's, like, the universal god of darkness, and, like, that was the original one, and he's sitting, like, lying down on a lily pad, and a tube goes out of his belly button, and it goes up, and a flower erupts from the, his belly button, and Brahman's at the top of that. Yeah, Brahma. Brahma, God. Brahma's at the top of that, and Brahma creates the universe out of there. Is the creator God. Yes. And there's Brahman, which is essentially like Holy Spirit-esque kind of thing. Yeah. Like a oneness between all things. And then there's the creator God, Brahma, then Vishnu, the preserver God, and then Shiva, the destroyer. Yeah. God. Yeah. 
which is Vishnu is like another really interesting god because mm. like he has so many stories mm. and He's got a um, lot of avatars. So many avatars and like god pals along the way to help him out. Like do you remember like he has there I forgot their names, but there's two gods that are always that show up with him a lot and like like go do things and there's a lot of stories based around them and it was like two beautiful women um that oh, have their... I think Vish not the destroyer. Vishnu? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Do you have them written down? Uh Vishnu's consorts, uh Lakshmi and Badevi? Yeah, I think it was them. Yeah. Lakshmi and Badevi. And Lakshmi is the goddess of good fortune and wealth, and Badevi is the earth goddess. Okay, I think it was this one. Those are basic. Those are also, I think, his consorts, meaning his wives. Mm -hmm. Oh, he has so many wives. Yeah. Well, those are the two main ones. Yeah, two main ones. And uh, all of the the consorts of the the main gods are also equal to them. So you could mm -hmm. look at um, when we talk about Brahma, we could also be talking about uh, Saraswati. Who is because they are the two sides of they're like the same person so you could say that Brahma is as a f is female and it would be just as accurate because yeah. their their spouse is also them in the same way that you could look at Shiva as one of their two consorts which is Parvati and Sati. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the river, but one of the stories that like will forever be stuck in my mind is. Um, the river... Ganges? I think it... Is it the Ganges? The Ganges, I think, is the biggest river in India. Yeah. One of the biggest. It might be the Ganges, then. Um, the story of that, because I think it was Shiva. Um, they tied the Milky Way to... Uh, the story goes along the lines of, like... Um, the Milky Way is so big and bright and beautiful and like you can see it in the sky like a flowing mm -hmm. river and the story was that um, Vishnu Shiva had a lot of water in his hair and he had to wring it out one day mm -hmm. and he wrung it out and as it flowed it flowed down to earth and created the Ganji River interesting and so the Milky Way is his hair and then the river is a continuation of that. That's really cute. I like yeah. that. I can't remember if I'm getting the god right, but it's a god <laughs> that's doing that. I uh, could, uh, could have been any of the three, I guess, I suppose. Yeah. That's really interesting. Uh, in a certain kind of way, you can kind of see that. The Milky Way does kind of land on the earth. Yeah. You know? I like it. I thought that was cool. I, I think, like, I could stories. just I go into like deep dive into all the creation stories and it's just constant entertainment after entertainment or yeah. well, creation stories wild of different ride religions of different religions or even there's 330 million gods in this religion 33 33 million gods you can go in depth and just yeah. be constantly entertained and like have moral stories behind most of them yeah. or just beautiful stories like yeah. that's how the river was created that's a lovely tale yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, like, in ancient religions like this, there's a lot more nature-focused mm. um, and, like, being in awe in the beauty of nature rather than being awe, in awe in the beauty of that god, specifically. Mm. And I think that's really cool. I like, mm. I like that just kind of more connection to nature and reasoning behind that. Mm. Do you remember any um, other stories from the uh, from your studies off the top of your head? What's the god with the elephant head? Ganesha. Son do you remember of Shiva? Do you remember how Ganesha got his head? I do. Do you want to go into that? Go ahead, if you'd like. I don't do you remember, remember exactly. I can't remember it exactly. I don't remember. But I do know that he why. had a human head. Yeah. He was I born with a human head. Okay, so I think it was Shiva. I'm gonna guess Shiva. Mm -hmm. So Shiva had this wonderful mansion, and I think it was Parvati was the his wife at the, in the story. Mm -hmm. And Parvati had a son, mm -hmm. and um, she was really close with her son. And then one day she, and he's not very old; he's like ten years old. 
and one day he's gonna take a bath or she's gonna go take a bath and so she goes hey i'm gonna go take a bath and he's like i'm gonna guard the bath so no one can come in and i'm gonna make sure that you're protected and while you're taking a bath mm -hmm. and so he guards the door and then shiva comes home and apparently shiva hadn't met his son yet mm -hmm. so all shiva knows is that this person is blocking his way to go see his wife so he so he lops the kid's head off lops Ganesha's head off mm -hmm. and then um then he goes in and sees his wife and then she realizes that he had just killed her son and she freaks out and Shiva kind of like oh shoot I think it was Shiva and he um uh, it's like, I'll find brings him head. back to life but it, instead of giving him back his human head actually takes it, an elephant head which he has um so that he has hunters go out and, and get and bring back to him and places the head on the on the child's shoulders and then uh, is, uh again get comes comes back to life uh, mm -hmm. uh, but now has an elephant head yeah. which is really interesting yeah and yeah. um and is who Ganesh, it, like, he's the god of uh, re uh removing of obstacles removing of obstacles that's why like you see ganesh and revered a lot yeah and mm -hmm. just so often as like a form of or as a god of worship because yeah. removing of obstacles who wouldn't would want nice. like Oh my gosh, rent's getting so much lately. Yeah. I need help on that. <laughs> the rent is too damn high. <laughs> As a, that was a right. platform that somebody tried to be a politician at. Rent is like, too damn high. Rent's Ganesh damn high. will help you. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's that. That was. Sweet. That was a good story. There was also, if you saw in like a lot of, um, just art depictions of the gods, mm -hmm. especially, um, not Shiva, Vishnu. Mm -hmm. um he's often blue yeah and very feminine yeah and that was well all of them have their consorts but yeah mm -hmm. yes but no even like the men are very feminine looking and that was like their ideal beauty was like blue was such blue was like such a rare color so they used it as often as they could mm. and to distinct the gods from the normal people mm, actually vishnu is the only one that's blue you sure? Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. Then. I looked at it, and that's because his personality is, um, like, water. Tell me more. So, yeah, I think his name literally translates to the dark one, or black one, but uh, he's generally depicted as blue because his spirit is uh, flows like water to fill whatever is needed to so be filled. I was totally wrong, and thank you for that. <laughs> well, I mean, did you, if you might have been correct in whatever story you were talking about, because there's a no, lot of I different interpretations of these difference. gods. Um, on why he was blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I th the one the story I heard was that, but um, that makes more sense. But I uh, the, the only reason I w uh, corrected you is because I know that it was only Vishnu that's generally mm. depicted as blue. I could have sworn Ganesh was also blue. Well, Ganesha is actually the son of Vishnu, so maybe that would make sense. But I generally see it uh, Ganesha is born pink. Oh damn, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but either way. Um, did you do you know um, the what uh, Parvati and Sadi are actually representative of the consorts of Shiva? Because like I, in the, in the video it doesn't actually say, but I meant to. Those are the two um, blank spots that I have in these notes. Parvati, how do you spell? Parvati, P A R V A T I. Actually, where's my pen? <laughs> Parvati. And what is Parvati goddess of? Maybe look that up. Parvati goddess of fertility. Fertility. And the other god? Uh, Sati. S A T I. Sati. Patience. No. Ooh. Huh. Sati or Suti was a historical Hindu practice in which a widow sacrificed herself well, by that's... sitting atop of her deceased husband's funeral pyre. That's not what I'm not asking about, but that's no. pretty intense. <laughs> it's very intense. <laughs> Hindu goddess of felicity and longevity. Felicity? Felicity. Felicity slash longevity. Even though she killed herself, so that's not very. Sati's the goddess of love, though, right? Or she becomes the goddess of love. Sati. 
does Sati become the god? I think. It's been a while since I did that did research, research on the goddess, the god and goddess of love, which was a really interesting story. I can actually pull Felicity up. Felicity and longevity. Cool. Yeah, got it. Sati mm -hmm. might die and actually be reborn as the goddess of love. That makes sense. I mean, she killed herself on top of her dead husband. Yeah, I think that, that she does, and then it is later reborn as... I can't remember there's the name, so, but she's three the goddess million. of love. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's wild. Um, that was a good story. That was based... A lot of those stories are influenced the bohemian lifestyle, the goddess of love, mm -hmm. which is when I did the, the paper on um, Moulin Rouge, mm -hmm. talking about the bohemian lifestyle, which is freedom, love, truth, and freedom, love, truth, beauty. Yeah, beauty. freedom, love, truth, and beauty. Yeah, um, they worship like the arts and just free essentially, love. Essentially, free love. Yeah. yeah, and it's a lovely society. It can exist in a vacuum, it's unfortunately. So, so it, that's generally why people hate them because a, a traveling group of, of very emotionally driven um, theater people isn't going to live well if the, like, if there's okay. a warring country. You were at high school <laughs> you drama know? club. Yeah. And you see why they love do, doing what they do, because technically speaking, they're living for all the, bo yeah. the all the positives of life. But the problem but they're generally not, like, comes down to is... really you, contributing to society at that not, point. Not in the way that keeps a society running. Yeah. They're like, we, we love putting on theater, which is such a great thing, especially because of both of our... I, especially my love for movies, and then also your love for movies. It's just really nice to appreciate theater, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's like, but I can't constantly just be buying movies. I actually also have to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't just sit yeah. and like enjoy yeah. a good film day after day. Yeah, it doesn't excuse racism towards gypsies like like they've j classically experienced, but at the same time, it's like, oh man, uh, yeah. Oof. Well, it wasn't like the. Would you say that, like, all gypsies live the bohemian style? Then? Gypsies were based on the bohemian lifestyle. Yeah. So that's that's why people tended to hate them is because they, they were outcasts. Because they like to live free love, and then they were in basically a Puritan, not Puritan, but a Catholic society, which is very much so you're supposed to be, like, not like that. God damn, the priest from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frollo. 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 I, can't I remember his name. Guy. I can't believe I remember his name, dude. Oh, great guy. That great was... guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not a great guy. God, he, him, um, uh, basically saying, even though he's like a like a big Catholic priest, basically saying that because I can't have her, I need to kill her. Yeah. Yeah. Which was a thing. Oh God. <laughs> Which was a thing. God. Which was what the power struggle. What people with power unchecked used to do all mm -hmm. the time. Like, mm -hmm. I people can't have do. it, no one can. Yeah. People still do, yeah, it's wild. It's rough. It's a little more difficult now, but get I away with things. feel like you, we aren't going around killing people for not being able to control them. We're just, like, making mm -hmm. their lives a living hell instead. <laughs> okay, back to Hinduism. There's the only thing I have left to talk about would be a little bit more on Dharma and then the four major sects of Hinduism. Okay. I don't know much about the four major sects. Do you want to talk about that first? Yeah. Okay. Then... So the four major sects, uh, and I have also descriptions of which one, of what they are, would be the Vaishnavas, which are primarily worship Vishnu, mm -hmm. the preserver god, which as someone who exists, I think I'd like to be preserved, you know? <laughs> so I, that makes sense to me. Uh, the she Shivas, which primarily worship Shiva, which are like the Satanists. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just joking. But, um, the uh, pessimists of the Hindu yeah, world. Yeah, I don't know what it means to primarily worship the god of destruction. But then again, considering well, like, that we just talked about how the god of love comes point. out of the god of uh, destruction. Well, I feel like um, which a lot is of people... Which is super ironic if you think about. The, what, the Shindu spectrum? Shavas. Shavas. Uh, um, S-H-A-I-V-A-S. Shavas? I don't know. You, however you want to pronounce it, is correct. However you want to pronounce it, is correct. The Shavas actually, like, I totally understand which, worshiping Shiva because your destruction is coming, but mm. you're going back to Brahman at that point. Great point. Yeah. No, actually. No? Yeah. You would. Like, you at the end, when Brahman. Shiva exists to destroy the world and bring it back to Brahma, mm. where it belongs. So realistically when the mm. world is destroyed it goes back your the, the water droplet goes back 
Hmm. And that's what the goal is. Like, currently the world is out of the water Mm -hmm. and existing as that single drop. She ensures that it goes back. To ensure that it comes back. Interesting. I like it. Uh, Smartas. Goddamn dog. Uh, Smartas, which is the... uh, They basically follow sacred texts other than the uh, um, the Vedas. So there's the four Vedas, which is the fundamental... um, Dog. Stop. Sit down. Sit. Um, yeah, so the, the smartest, they follow the sacred text rather than the Vedas. So it's all this, the sacred texts of the religion besides the core, four, the core four. So it's not that they dismiss them. It's just that they uh, follow their the, all the other ones. So um, I have like a, I, I don't know, but for sure. But it sounds like that's how um, the caste system was created by like people following everything but the Vedas. Mm. Because I know the Bhagavad Gita is one of the reasons why the caste system was created. Because they took that one line where it's like, I created the um, the four castes, and then they ran with that. Or maybe that was from the Vedas. <laughs> Can't remember. Tracy! Come. Not sure what she's up to. What's she barking at? It's just noise. At the wind. <laughs> barking at the wind. And then the last one was the Shaktas, which is the... Which is really interesting. They worship the goddess Devi, or um, also Devi? known as Shakti, which is just the feminine Brahman. Essentially, Brahman it has, for whatever reason, this masculine energy. So people would say it would be the uh, masculine, but um, uh, the, sh- the, sh- the people who worship Shakti would say that it's um, it's equally feminine, and they worship the feminine aspects of Brahman. Interesting. So some, uh, something along those lines. Basically, Shakti is Brahman. It's mm-hmm. the way, way I just heard it described. Um, and yeah, so those are the four main sects. Um, it's I think that that the Shaktas being one of the main sects is really interesting, though. Yeah, just the like the... the specifically of the feminine Brahmin. Well, this is all like uh, from what I've heard, like um, Asian. Like Asian religion. Um, is much different than, like, Western religious practices. Um, so, like, what I've heard, like, in, like, Western religious practices, you have one religion and you stick with it. Hmm. In um, Asia, at, like, the um, lecture series I was listening to, the first two lectures were all about, like, um, India itself and, like, mm-hmm. the different cultures, and it's, like, 2% Christianity, um, and then, like, I forgot the percentage of Hindus. Like, well, you can worship any there. religion you want to there. Exactly. But it also leads to worshiping multiple religions mm-hmm. and, like, taking what you pick. So, like, there are the four main aspects. Um, but, like, people will follow, if not one mainly, but they'll take from the others. Hmm. Like, when I was actually reading the Tao Pu, um, it mentioned as well how um, religions like will follow Taoism, Buddhism, and Hinduism all at the same time, and mm. they just pick the aspects that they um, really sense. drive for. Because a lot of this is mainly just um, how to live your life and be a good person, and the stories and yeah. the God um, tellings are really insightful and cool. But it's not like if you don't believe in these, you're going to hell. Mm-hmm. It's this is how you live your life better, and so you can pick from um, Devi or um, the different sections, and just follow your life that way. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and I just think it's so wild l- looking at the different cultures and how they like follow religions so differently. Mm-hmm. Again, like Western culture, you have one religion and you kind of stick to it, and like Christianity and the newer religions all follow that aspect um but just the older religions are kind of made on top of each other Hmm. so you can a lot more overlap yeah there's a lot of overlap and it's a lot of following what you want Hmm. i know that specifically um, hinduism would, would say that all religions are essentially hinduism so everyone's hindu whether you say you're hindu or not yeah i mean a lot of religions believe that too but 
this one's also saying that there's no specific way to worship, which basically means that if you are Christian, then that means, and you are, yeah, you, you can consider, follow the Hindu. Yeah, if you follow Christianity ah, well, they would say I, that you're also a good Hindu. I think that's what it was. Um, they were describing Hinduism not as a religion, but a lifestyle. Which I so which is, I think is great. Yeah, I think it's great, and that's kind of what I would want out of religion at this point yeah. in my life, where it's like I'm not looking for a god to put all my chips on the pl- on the plate and bet on them. I mm-hmm. just I really want just like I want I some structure want, on how to live my life and yeah. be a good person. And, I just and want less of, guidance on that yeah. and more structure. Yeah, and I I don't need a perfect description of heaven and hell to to believe in something. I just I really just want to know how to how I should live my life or what's a good way that what's what's a good way to describe how I should live my life. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what Hinduism yeah. provides. Yeah, and that's just like uh, through the, the last topic that I think I have to talk about today, which would be Dharma, which is, uh, and the way I think I had it described, in or it was described in the video, was that when Dharma either tips towards um, good or when it tips towards bad, it um, basically creates an avatar of one of the gods, generally Vishnu, to balance the scales. So in times of great turmoil and crisis, um, Vishnu will have an avatar created uh, who will um, work towards balancing the scales and Mm -hmm. defeating the great evil. So Mm -hmm. that's a really interesting thing. And not the last airbender, but, (laughs) or a big blue person. It's actually a big blue person. Yeah, a big blue person. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Which I think is really interesting when you look, uh, actually, did you know that they're making more movies? Avatar movies? Yeah, they're making more. I'm excited for those big blue people. Oh, I was yeah. thinking the last Airbender. No, they're not making more of those. Please <laughs> I was like a little disappointed. how bad they made the last one. Um, yeah, and then uh, not only Vishnu, but uh, all of them have their own avatars that are created. But um, that is one of the main things that happens. The the gods uh, come down in times of need, mm-hmm. uh, recreated, reborn mm-hmm. as someone new. Could be you. Could be, be me. Coming down. Oh God. Personally, because I don't believe in the literal um, rebirth of a god, I would say that there's a person who fulfills all the same check boxes as one of these gods mm-hmm. would. So, like, you have a person that, um, yeah, like a Jordan Peterson character or like a Gandhi character, or like who uh, name another person that's like Philosopher. good-hearted, who's who knows a lot of stuff, who's who's weathered and has like gr- a good um, grip on kind of how things are going. Socrates. Socrates would be another, uh, would, uh, the Hindus would most likely believe that he was, uh, if maybe not Vishnu, but uh, another Aka, uh, a god that came down and was reborn. Um, I think that it, because it's like a checkbox system, that'll just keep happening forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's until humans stop existing. Interesting. If they ever stop existing. So do yeah. they have, like, so would they actually consider, like, current figures that are making the world a better place, like... Um, avatars of potential yeah i mean it's like i mean obviously i would assume that they would say we're not we're not sure who's an avatar mm-hmm. but i i'm pretty sure that they said that um I mean, at least like, buddhists believe no I yeah mean, i think buddhists believe that gandhi was actually a um, rebirth of buddha or something like that along those buddha lines has like four, over 400 re- rebirths well he's just gonna like keep stories. being reborn forever most likely yeah but he's, like he's the guy that ascended and then came back to help people ascend yeah but yeah. there's like a human who was ended. over four. Oh God, it has to be way more than that. Four hundred stories of mm. Buddha's rebirth and like mm. um, the monkey one is really good. <laughs> well, that's not Buddha. That's Buddha. Wait, monkey is Buddha. The Buddha came back as again. I learned this in my Asian art history class. There's uh-huh. multiple paintings of the stories that like Buddha's rebirth, and one of them was um, Buddha came back as a monkey, and he also, Buddha had a um, nemesis that, like, was also being reborn constantly as well and trying to harm Buddha and, like, hmm. take away and not letting people... The devil character. Yeah, the devil character. And there was one section where Buddha was... Um, there was a large river and the monkeys were in the trees, the Buddha monkey and the evil Buddha monkey, um, <laughs> and the Buddha nemesis monkey. And they're trying to, like, get across and Buddha is going across and tricks the other one and the other falls into the river and that is the story of like how you're supposed to deceive with like kindness or something i i 
I just rambled right now. No, you but didn't. <laughs> you didn't. I just don't know the story. I don't know. It's been six years. I can't remember the story <laughs> exactly either. So Buddha knocks the evil monkey into the water. Buddha never harms the evil monkey, but he like deceives him. Makes him jump off the branch into the water. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I'm just trying to interpret that out how how I would interpret that. Um. How would I interpret that like you trick your the evil parts of you for to, into destroying itself i think it was something like that something along, is that like, how you would Buddha interpret was a story like trying that? to oh god so you, you take your your shadow or your negative aspects and trick your negative aspects into doing what it does best and destroying itself yeah while leaving the good parts of you. I'm trying to remember this story because, like, we had to do a little, a mini essay on, like, the one art piece that represented this. Mm. So the art piece itself is, like, forest on either side and a river in the center. And one monkey's up in the tree and the other monkey's in the river. Ah, oh, okay. And the bad monkey's in the river? The bad monkey's in the river. Evil monkey. Yeah. I'm trying to, like, remember the story behind that. <laughs> but not very well. No, it's, it's, like you said, it's been six years. Yeah. I just did that story about um, the creation of the goddess, God and Goddess of Love, and I can't remember it. <laughs> I genuinely can't. It's, it was a great story, and it's mm-hmm. definitely one that you could look up and it'd be like, wow, that was a really interesting story. I know that um, the the rebirth of Sati, or whatever the goddess was, um, came from the sweat of someone who, I think it was Brahma sweat because Shiva laughed. Like, Shiva made him nervous, and he sweat, and then um, she was born from the sweat. But was it, and she was, like, the goddess of love. love? So, like... Or later became the goddess of love. Yeah. But isn't that, like, interesting? Like, his love for um, the Could... other making him laugh so much? Yeah. So that, like, brotherly love, and she was born? Interesting. Yeah. Could have been brotherly love. Could have just been out of fear. Or, like, romantic love. Wait, say it again? Romantic love? Say the other part again? Brotherly love? Yeah, what do you mean brotherly love? They are basically the three main gods. I think it was out of fear. Oh. Do you think the god of creation well, fears then the why god would of, she, of destruction? Why would the god of love be born out of fear? Why would the god of love be born out of um, preservation or destruction? or I don't know why out of fear. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Because, I mean, it would yeah, make more yeah. sense, like, if he was laughing because it was a lovely moment. Oh, he was fair. He was terrified. It oh, was, in the story, it felt, it was very much so like he's terrified of Shiva. Oh. Well, shit, never mind. Yeah. Like, it was a... I'm just it was trying a to Shiva, reason, I think uh, it was Shiva looked at him and laughed, and he fl- frickin' sweat. Why else would you sweat if someone's looking at you Okay, and I thought he was crying. My bad. Yeah, he was sweating. Oh. Which I think is really in- an interesting detail for sure. Yeah. To me, that that sounds like out of fear, like you said. Yeah. Why would that be? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, why would you say the goddess of love would be created from the sweat of the goddess god of creation? Don't know. It's really working hard. I feel like competition. They just come... Don't know. The only way to quell the goddess of just the god of destruction would be to hey, look at this pretty lady. Honestly. <laughs> Don't look at me. Look at this pretty lady. Yeah. It just came out of my sweat. Wow. Nah. That could work. That could be a reason why she was created out of sweat mm-hmm. from him well, in that way. Well, the interesting, like, style, like, the Ganji River was created out of, like, the wet okay. locks of someone's hair. <laughs> so, like, the stories on all of, like, um, Brahmin coming out of a, a flower that came out of someone's belly button. That's also wild. Yeah. Just the origin, like, yeah. somewhat, the creative side of coming up with all of these stories is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. And it's, like, I feel like you can't think about it too much because they were just coming up with it. I don't mm. know. Well, personally, I think it was it was <clears throat> probably just people being creative, telling stories, trying to figure out how the world works. Yeah. That started religions in general, and most likely this one as well. Mm-hmm. So. Well, also, this is at most, like, 12,000 years old. Yeah. Okay. About, let's say. Yeah, roughly 12,000 years old. Mm-hmm. These stories are 12,000 years old. Mm-hmm. Like, this is before people had, like, different ways about looking at the world. It was just cut and dry, mm-hmm. like, explanation. Like, it would... There's... How does the world work? 
however you can yeah. conceptualize it. A really. flower came out of a dude's belly button. <laughs> yeah. I saw a blooming lotus flower, and that basically I assume that that's how the world is created. Yeah. Up out of the murky water. Mm-hmm. Lotus flowers are on lily pads, right? Yeah. So and they're... they grow in very murky water. Interesting. Yeah. That's really cool, though. And they're suppo- they're really beautiful, right? Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. I would actually love to have a lotus. Do they read flower each year? I believe so. Or is it a one and done kind of thing? We could do it. I would just actually... We'd have to get a real fish tank. I was thinking about getting a little tiny outside pond. Like a little, like a barrel. No, not until you... Like the size of a laundry basket. Not until you have that garden down packed. (sighs) Once you do that, you can definitely put a pond in. We can't put a pond in. I'm not putting a pond in. The reason your mom has a pond is because it already had a pond. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> she, <laughs> no, it's like a, the size of a laundry basket, and you just like put a, put it to the. It has a filter, and we could just plug it in outside and replenish it, and it can grow a lily pad and have like one goldfish in it. Again, you probably we probably the need raccoons to get would eat the goldfish. <laughs> put a put a fence around it. <laughs> we could just. I honestly just kind of want to get a better tank than the one we have. Yeah. Get a bigger one. The fish will be happier. He's happy where he is. He's pretty. I mean, the like. I mean, can he you, tried can killing tell? himself the other day, so maybe well, a He just tank jumped tank. out of the thing when you were trying to clean the tank. <laughs> <laughs> Fish do that. He could have uh, died. My, I had a parent that, or I think dad, accidentally when he was cleaning the fishbowl, dropped the fish down the garbage disposal. And, then and because it, it was basically dead, he was just like, well, then he turned it on. Um, my When I was like... What a way to go. I it's actually pretty quick, to be honest. It's pretty quick. Done. Yeah. When I was <laughs> so messed up. Went from a flopping fish to fish paste in, in one like, second flop. Oh. <laughs> when I was like three years old, um, we put too much water in the fish bowl. Oof. Um, and the fish jumped out yeah, of it. Sad. And its name was Goldie. But anyway. Goldie dried out. No, its name was Julie because Julie, Julie Elmo had a goldfish and her name was also Julie. So but that Elmo was my. Had a gold... Oh, Elmo the show. Did you didn't watch Elmo's World? God, fuck, I watched it, like, once. Anyway. Plus. I didn't watch it very much. Going, but, um, but my goldfish, Julie, jumped out of her bowl, and we didn't find her. Like, <laughs> we didn't find her. Just one day she was gone. And then, like, a few weeks later, my mom was, like, sweeping the kitchen, and she, like, swept under, like, way under the counter. Mm-hmm. There was, like, a Frito chip. Oh, she, like, got it, it at... Frito chip. It wasn't. She curled... That fish, like, mummified into a curled little Frito chip. Oh, no. (laughs) And I was like, oh. I think we had a similar story where uh, Rascal was in the living room over by the the kitchen, had that counter thing. Mm -hmm. And we we lost the fish and we had no idea what happened to it. And it was actually wedged underneath uh, Rascal's cage. (laughs) So when we moved it, we found it. Oh, man. It wasn't like a Frito chip. It was just, like, a stick. (laughs) It was like a wood chip where it's, like, straight and dead. (laughs) <laughs> oh god poor fish yeah. poor life uh fish aren't they don't have good lives no live in a box even the ones in the wild probably don't exactly have great lives no. uh, we were talking about the the sheer amount of before we were talking this didn't we at one point talk about the, the sheer amount of like life in the wild maybe we didn't talk about this there's a lot of life in the wild but like the con, like if you really think about it, that's a wild existence. Like literally. Oh yeah. It's like where it's insane. You, it's you just fight survival. for life for your entire life, and then you die. And when <laughs> thinking about it, is just crazy. I know. Like I was straight up going on a walk, and just I saw a bird, and I was like, the existence of a bird is insane. They only they actually focus... probably have a pretty good life. Yeah, they probably do, but they only focus on survival. Like, that's it. Like, you're eating seeds on the ground, and holy shit, that's a squirrel. I gotta fly. That could hurt me. Yeah. It's just flight. There's just constant fear, or just, like, eating food. Mm. Fear, eating food. And that's it. Mm. It's wild. I think, like, but maybe that's just better in certain ways, because, like, we have better minds, but, like, do we have a better existence? Like... No, we're actually, technically speaking. We're constantly stressed and overthinking and overeating. Like, we're not healthy people, mentally or physically in a lot of ways. We could be. We could be, yeah. So it's like... I'm just, I'm saying people in, in general, a, not specifically us. I mean, we could be more healthy. Self, <laughs> self-awareness is just that double-edged sword where it's like, huh. uh, on the one hand, on the one hand, we can, we recognize what our problems are and we can f- fundamentally make sure that we can make them better. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand... 
we also recognize our shortcomings. Yeah. So we constantly are in this like frustrating position between our ideal and our our ideal positive and our ideal negative or the that just, just the, clash. I, the ideals of the the positive and the, and the negative and we recognize that we're neither of them and no matter how much we struggle we'll never get out of that frustrating suffering of mm-hmm. knowing where your faults are and knowing that you're not your perfection. Yeah. I still when whereas an animal doesn't like, struggle with that. So yeah. you could say that they have a better life in that reason. Like um I think I think the best existence in that probably there is is um a, a well loved dog. Yeah. Or a cat. Okay, I still can't there's nothing get like better than that. No, you're safe. Yeah. You're just have so sur- like constant safety so yeah. you're all good yeah um you're fed you're just like and loved and loved love is a big thing Love is a big thing you have that dog needs a pack mm-hmm. and we provide the pack mm-hmm. a dog that lives outside its whole life isn't gonna mm-hmm. feel safe even if it lives outside it for like a good chunk of its life once it like sets in that mindset then it's gonna struggle to like tokens for example the one your your family My dog, dog. The lovely dog does show affection but it's not like a social animal in, in mm-hmm. the same way that uh, yeah that other dogs are mm-hmm. it, i don't know you couldn't explain to tokens that it needs to uh, love its the family in like the best way possible and you couldn't you couldn't explain to tokens that it should act like a labrador yeah well like it's just that's just the way it is it's a month. of like a dog that like street dog a street dog that like doesn't know how to part like participate in a pack mm-hmm. properly yeah so like pack mentality like i'm gonna show love and affection to the whole family mm-hmm. tokens is very um distant mm-hmm. with all of that mm-hmm. i don't know exactly how that j- it's, it's jives a, it's got to be a development thing right when yeah. they were little they just either they were, were alone like, a lot social. or shunned well, a like, lot yeah i know you found I it like after fourth of july right yeah like um the spca found that puppy in a field after the 4th of July. So either someone dumped them during the fireworks or mm. it got out during the fireworks. Yeah. And that dog is like terrified of fireworks. Yeah. Under the bed every 4th of July now. Mm-hmm. Um, Luckily our dog is not afraid of No, she like fireworks. ran up to the firework. She's got no, she's like kind of unaffected, which is yeah. to me is wild. Yeah. <laughs> that thing is exploding in front of you and you're not terrified. She's like, it's not a squirrel. That's fine. <laughs> if it exploded in the shape of a squirrel, then she'd be all over it. <laughs> I still think, like, whenever I think of, like, Mm self-awareness and, like, animals, Mm -hmm. I always flash back to Big Mouth and Jay's dog that's (laughs) self-aware, where it's, like, so angry, and then it looks in the mirror, and it's, like, boof, boof, sadness. Sadness overwhelms me. (laughs) (laughs) Or, like, woof, woof, woof. I'm proud of you, Jay. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> for, for overcoming your struggles. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great it's show. Like... Oh my god, Big Mouth is so good, dude. Yeah. Dude, Oh I... my gosh. It's just like, the life... Oh god. People either love or hate that show, and I get it. Like, I don't know it's why you would hate it. so raunchy. Yeah. It's like... Either that, way, that just that strikes me. That takes people off, which, like, I understand. I hate it when people are... Well, like, you can't be like... You can't dismiss the whole artistic expression because it doesn't... It's they make not too many queen. penis it, jokes. It's like, that's the point. There's too many penis that's jokes. I'm uncomfortable. Oh, my God. How can you love life and not... And, well, it's and a fine line. It's nudity. a cartoon that, like, shows, like, 12-year-old penises. So you're like, is but this... But they're all adults. It's We I get know, it. It's, a, it's not literal adults. Not, oh, God. Yeah. That line is a weird line, too. At one point, do we consider this the age? Like, is the character... Is, if the character is 13, are yeah. we okay with anything that it does as, as long as it's uh, performed by an adult? Yeah. What about in, in the cases of, like... Like, are you creating child pornography right, right. here? What about the cases of all the the fucking um, uh, manga and, and hentai stuff? Oh. Where it's, like, <laughs> very... Where it's, like, obviously... Where, like, literally like, they're saying this is a 13-year-old. Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> ah! And it's like, holy holy fuck, that is a 13-year-old, and that's why, the, and people did this on purpose. Yeah. Are we okay with this? I'm not really okay with this, but at the same time, people are allowed to express themselves to, to whatever they want, and it's not someone's fault it Someone's like, fault that they're attracted to what's on the screen in front of them. Yeah. You know? It's like, that but it, either like way, it just makes me go, mm, in a certain way? Mm. Yeah. The best way I could describe it is like, we have, yeah, man. God, that's so fucking crazy. That's a fucked up place. Huh? The world's a fucked the up world place. The world is a fucked up place, dude. There's, and there's, yeah, that's, I don't know what to do about that. I think that even I don't know Japan how we got, like, to do about that. I don't know how we got from Hinduism to, like, child pornography. Child pornography. <laughs> but, um. Oh, God. Maybe we should bring it back to Hinduism. Yeah. Let's bring uh, it back. <laughs> yeah, Hinduism is, uh, 
the, I really, the main things of it would be, just as a recap, since we've, we've gone over a bunch of stuff, Hinduism comes is inherently tied to India, the place where it was born, mm-hmm. and uh, is essentially just... Uh, and I think the way we described it as a drop in the ocean, and that's... We are each drops that are all eventually. trying to become one with the universe once again. Mm-hmm. And that's the uh, existence drops. is just that process. Yeah. Drops that were. Again. I'd say, like, a really good exa- er, um, explanation is probably, like, I don't know, like, do you have a sense of, like, loss or just unfulfillment? Um, Generally or a, from a specific thing? Just, like, a loose, like, um, there's a piece yeah. of you that's kind of missing and you're searching for it. Um, uh, I find that's also like uh, yes, but I find being that, that drop detached from the water um, is that feeling, and like well, eventually loose. coming back to that is the serenity we're looking for. Hmm. Um, very loose, but no, I, like I kind of I, I don't know. I really enjoy Hinduism as like a lifestyle, interesting. and just um, and I like how in Asian. Asian Asian religious practices Mm -hmm. and Eastern religious practices like you're able to take from multiple religions and learning that through the study of Hinduism and like Taoism and Buddhism is really interesting and I like how you're able to like this is is a religion but it is totally a lifestyle as Mm -hmm. well and you can follow you could argue that it's more of a lifestyle than even a religion yeah and which like I heard a lot, like, um, saying that from the multiple, um, audiobooks or YouTube videos I learned Mm. from, so. Yeah, I wonder what religion would do next. Probably Buddhism. Maybe Judaism, but probably Buddhism. I would be down to study up on Buddha's past lives. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. There's over 400, so. Yeah, so I think that'll probably be next time. We'll do some Buddhism. That'd be fun. Yeah. But Maybe I'll get for, my monkey story right. Thank you. I know because you, you come from a background where you had a, basically no religion. No I religion. Came, and I basically and I came from a background which was um, fundamentalist Christian, essentially, mm-hmm. Bible based, non denominational, but it's what they taught was fundamentalism. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that it's, it's really interesting to get your perspective on things. Thank you for doing the research with me and doing the podcast with me. And it was fun. I out. didn't take notes, so thank you for. Yeah, well, a I wanted to make sure us. that we had some sort of structure so we wouldn't forget anything. Because off the top of my head, I'm gonna, oh, I would butcher the whole religion. We had talked about hentai a lot more then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great conversation, though, babe. All right, I love you, and thank you for doing the podcast with me. Of course. <laughs> be able to live in a suburban town where there is a Girl Scout troop, but often in the city of Albany there aren't many Girl Scout troops, and girls that live in like urban areas or in the city don't really have access to a Girl Scout troop because of the kind of geographical areas and also like other African American troop leaders that would want to start a troop. But I think that is extremely important and I think that that's definitely one area where Girl Scouts can improve is just the outreach to the inner city and being able to improve diversity within troops and within Girl Scouts. Oh, did I mess it up? Well, it's recording.